you have to watch out for unanticipated consequences. Even while the president was in Helsinki, uh, the European Union was in Beijing with the Chinese negotiating trade and, and promising that the two of them together were going to save the global system. And then from there, the EU went off to Japan and signed an agreement that had been in the works for years. But they've accelerated it uh, during these uh, latest trade spats. And they signed something that could be the biggest free trade agreement in history, uh, reducing 99% uh, of all tariffs gone. Uh, so, uh, and then with China, this is the second point. Um, if you actually do the numbers of deficits and trade, you would think that we have the leverage in this relationship. They have 571 billion of deficits. That means as you escalate, it's going to be more and more pain for China and less for us. But it doesn't quite work that way because of all the companies operating in China, where China as an authoritarian com uh, government can make things enormously difficult for the companies operating within China. Uh, so, uh, so let's see how this all uh, all, all unfolds. But one has to have a strategy. One has to watch this very clearly and make sure that there aren't unanticipated consequences, including higher consumer costs for the United States and in the end not winning uh, the trade war quite so easily as the president thinks it's possible. I guess to that point, we, we were watching the futures. And, and when the interview first ran with those comments about the president saying that he was ready to go to 500 billion in these tariffs and, and ramp things up, we saw the Dow futures uh, drop by more than double what they'd been. They were down, we were down by over 120. Now we're back to down 79. Um, but we haven't really seen huge panic in the markets about this, Fred. Uh, never more than a few hundred points. And, and, and that seems to kind of roll off. Is that just because people think this is a negotiation? I, I think that's right. I think the markets uh, see Trump as the negotiator. And in a negotiation, you try to create points of leverage to get the best deal possible. And so one hasn't actually seen the pain of the tariffs or the pain of the increased prices actually go through into the market yet. So I think the, the market is still uh, uh, baking in uh, the fact that one's going to come to an agreement that really isn't that bad after all. And, and I, I would bet on that at this point simply because I think the president doesn't want to act against his own interests. There's a second part of this that's interesting, which is this first 50 billion wasn't really all that much about deficits if you talk to the uh, White House officials that were involved in this. They were aimed at um, IP issues, intellectual property theft. They were aimed at cyber issues, tech issues. Uh, so he hasn't really cut deeply into the, and that wasn't the first intention of these first 50 billion to go after the, the massive uh, trade deficit. And Fred, that actually gets to, a, gets to a point here. If in fact this is a negotiation, if in fact there's a process behind the scenes that we can't really see, uh, will China give on perhaps some of those longer term structural issues like the uh, technology sharing and things like that and requiring joint ventures, which by the way is not going to show up really in the trade deficit numbers in anybody's you know, window uh, of the next year or two? Uh, you're already seeing the Chinese downtone their language about t China 2025. They're changing the language on that, which looked protectionist from their side, trying to keep others out of their, particularly the, their technology growth. Uh, they certainly uh, had a scare with the ZTE case, and that seemed, they seemed to, uh, the both sides seem to have walked back from that a little bit, although that's not done yet. So I think there's a lot going on behind the scenes with the U.S. and China. Uh, there's a, a lot in public as well, but in this relationship, there is a lot of talking going beyond the scenes because I think both sides uh, see that they have enormous stakes in this. And in the end, the Chinese do know they have to give some ground. Uh, the one thing that the president touches on is very often the truth, and the truth is that these have been not the best bait, bad trade deals. We have been ripped off on, on occasion. Uh, and so he takes an extreme position, and my guess is the Chinese will give enough so that the president uh, and his negotiators will back off in the end. And I think that's what the markets are baking in. Hey, Fred, uh, you're pretty balanced, and even after sitting with you for several hours the other day, I'm not entirely sure how you feel on this whole thing. Would you describe your, your, your being optimistic or pessimistic on, on how this might all end? Well, <laughs> the, uh, I, I'm, I'm an optimist who worries a lot. <laughs> uh, uh, and so, and so That's reasonable. look, I like the fact that President Trump is bringing to a head, uh, by the way, I stole that quote from Secretary Albright, it's, it's one of her favorites, uh, but, uh, but the president uh, brings things to light that need to be talked about. Uh, our allies have not 
carried a, uh, the right burden. Uh, uh, some of our trade deals haven't been fair. Uh, I think that's what resonates with his base, and that's why sometimes he, by being disruptive, he can bring about deals that other people can't. The question is, is he going to be, in the end, a deal maker? Or is he going to be, in the end, disruptive? And that's where I get a little bit pessimistic, because here's a guy who's uh, put his name on buildings all over the world, and so you would think he was a builder. But so far, what we've seen more is taking down the Iran uh, nuclear deal, taking around down the TPP deal, the Trans-Pacific mm -hmm. Partnership deal. But what is he building in, in its place? And I really think in the next two years of his first term, he really has to start building some things that he can put the Trump name on that are actually lasting structures instead of just tearing things down. So that's that the, the optimist in me likes the fact that he's taking these things yeah. on, uh, uh, but would I like to see him build some things. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.